Hi friends. Today we will discuss about second part of 5S Lid Assessor Training Module. As I have already told, we will cover complete training module in 5 different training videos. So don't miss these videos. Cover this 5 videos one by one in a sequence for complete understanding with better clarity. So let's start second part of 5S Lid Assessor Training Module. In this video we will cover Different 1S and 2S Implements Actions Sign Board Concept Zonal Display Board Assembled Material Storage System Display Gallery Identifying Location Sign Board Strategy Good Working Environment First in first out. Inventory management by 2S, visible inventory control. 11 key areas of focusing in case of 1S audit stage. 12 key areas of focusing in case of 2S audit stage. Next. Shop floor after 1S 2S sort, seri 1S, the initial step involves sorting and removing unnecessary items from the shop floor. After 1S, you would observe a reduction in clutter and items that are not essential to the work processes. Workspaces become more organized and efficient as unnecessary items are removed. Set in order, seat on 2S. This step focuses on organizing the remaining items in a logical and efficient manner. After 2S, you would see tools, equipment, and materials arranged in a systematic way, making it easier for workers to find and use them. Visual cues such as labels, color coding, and clear storage locations contribute to a more structured and streamlined workspace. The combined impact of 1S and 2S is typically a cleaner, more organized, and visually efficient shop floor. Employees can more easily locate tools and materials, reducing the time spent searching for items. This not only enhances productivity, but also contributes to a safer work environment by eliminating unnecessary hazards and improving overall workplace morale. Next, a sign board is a visual display or panel that conveys information to an audience. Signboards are commonly used in various settings, such as businesses, public spaces, and workplaces to provide information, directions, warnings, or advertisements. They come in different shapes, sizes, and materials, depending on their intended purpose and location. Here are some common types and purposes of signboards. Informational signboards Provide information about services, facilities, or specific areas. Examples include directories, maps, and informational displays. Directional signboards. Guide people to specific locations within a building, facility, or public space. Use arrows, symbols, or text to indicate the way to various destinations. Warning and safety signboards. Communicate safety instructions, warnings, or precautions. Examples include signs indicating the presence of hazards, emergency exits, or safety equipment. Regulatory signboards. Convey rules, regulations, or compliance requirements. Examples include no smoking signs, speed limits, and other regulatory information. Promotional signboards. Advertise products, services, or events. Commonly used in retail settings, at events, or along roadways. Identification signboards. Clearly mark and identify specific areas, rooms, or facilities. Examples include room numbers, department names, and office identification. Instructional signboards. Provide instructions or guidelines for specific activities. Examples include instructions for using equipment, assembling products, 
or following a process. Digital sign boards Use electronic displays to convey dynamic and changing information. Commonly seen in airports, train stations, and commercial areas. When designing signboards, it's important to consider factors such as visibility, readability, and compliance with relevant regulations. The use of clear and concise language, along with appropriate symbols and colors, enhances the effectiveness of the communication. Signboards play a crucial role in ensuring safety, efficiency, and effective communication in various environments. Next, Zonal Display Board A zonal display board typically refers to a visual communication tool used to display information related to specific zones or areas within a larger space or facility. These display boards are often employed in industrial settings, warehouse, offices, or any large facility where it's essential to communicate information relevant to different zones. The purpose is to provide clear and visible information to individuals within each zone. Here are some common features and applications of zonal display boards. Zone Identification Clearly indicates and labels different zones within a facility. Uses colors, numbers, or names to differentiate between zones. Safety information. Displays safety instructions and information specific to each zone. May include emergency procedures, contact information, and safety equipment locations. Work instructions. Provides specific instructions or guidelines related to the activities conducted in each zone. Helps ensure that employees follow standardized procedures for tasks within their designated zones. Status and metrics. Displays real-time or periodic information about the status or performance of each zone. May include production metrics, inventory levels, or other relevant data. 5. Visual Management Supports visual management principles by using charts, graphs, or visual indicators to convey information about the state of each zone. Enhances quick comprehension and decision-making. Communication Hub Serves as the centralized communication hub for zone-specific announcements, updates, or news. Improves internal communication within a facility. Maintenance schedules. Communicates maintenance schedules and activities specific to each zone. Helps in planning and coordinating maintenance tasks efficiently. Quality control information. Displays information related to quality standards and control measures for each zone. Supports a focus on maintaining and improving product or service quality. Zonal display boards are part of the broader concept of visual management which aims to use visual tools to enhance communication, organization, and efficiency in the workplace. The design and content of zonal display boards should be tailored to the Next, Assembled Material Storage System An assembled material storage system typically refers to a system for organizing and storing materials or components that have been assembled or are ready for assembly. The goal is to efficiently manage inventory, facilitate easy retrieval, and optimize space utilization. The specific design of such a system can vary based on the type of materials, the assembly process, and the available space. Here are some key components and considerations for an assembled material storage system. Racking systems Use industrial racks or shelving systems to store assembled materials. Select racks based on the size, weight, 
and shape of the assembled components. Bin systems Employ bins or containers for smaller assembled parts. Label bins with clear and visible information for easy identification. Inventory management software Implement an inventory management system to track the quantity and location of assembled materials. Use barcoding or RFID technology for accurate and efficient tracking. Segregation by type or size Organize assembled materials based on type, size, or any other relevant categorization. This facilitates quick and easy retrieval when needed for the assembly process. Visual management Use visual cues such as color coding or labels to quickly identify different types of materials. Clearly mark storage locations to guide personnel during retrieval. Space optimization Plan the layout of the storage system to maximize the use of available space. Consider factors like vertical storage to make the most of the vertical space in the facility. Standardization Standardize storage procedures and locations to create consistency. This helps in streamlining processes and reducing the likelihood of errors. Accessibility Ensure that materials are stored in a way that facilitates easy access for retrieval. High demand or frequently used items should be easily accessible. Quality control measures Implement measures to ensure the quality of assembled materials is maintained during storage. Regular inspections and quality checks may be part of the storage process. Security measures Depending on the nature of the materials, consider security measures such as restricted access or surveillance to prevent theft or unauthorized handling. Implementing an effective assembled material storage system contributes to improved workflow efficiency, reduced lead times, and overall operational excellence in assembly processes. Regular reviews and adjustments to the system can help accommodate changes in production volume, product mix, or other factors affecting material storage needs. Next, creating a display gallery within a plant or manufacturing facility can serve various purposes, including showcasing achievements, promoting safety awareness, and celebrating the company's culture. Here are some ideas and considerations for setting up a display gallery in a plant. Safety Achievements Feature displays that highlight safety milestones, such as the number of accident-free days or successful safety initiatives. Showcase safety equipment, protocols, and success stories to promote a culture of safety. Employee Recognition Dedicate a section to recognize outstanding employees, perhaps with photos, achievements, or employee spotlights. Celebrate work anniversaries, certifications, or other notable accomplishments. Product Showcase Display finished products in an aesthetically pleasing manner. Provide information about the manufacturing process and key features of showcased products. Process Improvement Success Stories Showcase before and after displays of areas that have undergone process improvements. Highlight the impact of lean manufacturing principles or other efficiency initiatives. History Wall Create a visual timeline of the company's history, including key milestones, historical photos, and significant achievements. Share the company's growth and evolution over the years. Environmental and Sustainability Initiatives Display information about the company's commitment to environmental sustainability. Showcase eco-friendly practices, certifications and ongoing initiatives. Training and Development Dedicate a section to training and development opportunities within the company. 
Highlight employee training programs, workshops, and success stories. Customer testimonials. Share positive feedback from satisfied customers. Display testimonials, reviews, or thank you notes in a prominent area. Interactive displays. Consider incorporating interactive elements, such as touch screens or digital displays to engage visitors. Use multimedia presentations to showcase videos, interviews, or virtual tours. Community involvement. Feature the company's involvement in the local community. Showcase charitable initiatives, volunteer work, or partnerships with local organizations. Innovation Corner Highlight innovations and technological advancements within the company. Showcase new products, patents, or cutting-edge technologies being implemented. Employee Suggestions and Feedback Create a display for employee suggestions and feedback. Showcase the implementation of employee-driven ideas that have positively impacted the workplace. When setting up a display gallery, it's important to regularly update the content to keep it relevant and engaging. Encourage employees to contribute ideas and feedback for the gallery, fostering a sense of ownership and pride in the workplace. Next, Identifying Location Signboard Strategy The strategy for identifying locations using signboards involves designing and implementing a system that effectively communicates and directs people to specific areas within a facility or a broader environment. The goal is to create clear, visible, and informative signboards that aid in navigation and ensure that individuals can easily find their way. Here are key considerations for a signboard strategy to identify locations. Clarity and readability. Ensure that signboards are clear, easily readable, and use legible fonts and colors. Choose a font size and style that can be easily seen from a distance. Consistent design. Maintain a consistent design theme for all signboards throughout the facility. Consistency in design promotes a cohesive and organized look, reducing confusion. Color coding. Use color coding to differentiate between different types of locations or areas. Consistent color schemes help in quick recognition and understanding. Symbols and icons. Incorporate universally understood symbols and icons to enhance communication. Symbols can convey information quickly, even across language barriers. Placement and visibility. Strategically place signboards at key decision points and intersections. Ensure that signboards are well lit and easily visible, especially in areas with low light. Directional arrows. Include directional arrows to guide individuals toward their intended destination. Arrows help clarify the direction of movement and reduce ambiguity. Digital signage. Consider implementing digital signage for dynamic information updates and interactive maps. Digital displays can provide real-time information and accommodate changes more easily. Information Hierarchy Organize information on the signboards hierarchically, with the most critical information at the top. Prioritize clarity in conveying the most important details first. Multilingual signage If applicable, Include multiple languages on signboards to accommodate a diverse workforce or visitors. Multilingual signage ensures that everyone can understand the information provided. Emergency information. Include emergency exit signs and evacuation route information on signboards. 
क्लियरली मार्क इमरजेंसी असेंबली पॉइंट्स फॉर क्विक एंड सेफ इवैक्यूएशन टेस्टिंग एंड फीडबैक टेस्ट द इफेक्टिवनेस ऑफ द साइन बोर्ड्स बाय सीकिंग फीडबैक फ्रॉम एम्प्लॉज एंड विजिटर्स Use feedback to make necessary adjustments and improvements to the signage system. Maintenance plan. Implement a regular maintenance plan to ensure that sign boards remain in good condition. Replace or update sign boards as needed to reflect changes in the layout or information. By employing a thoughtful and comprehensive sign board strategy, You can enhance the overall navigation experience within your facility contributing to improved efficiency safety and positive user experience for both employees and visitors Next examples of good working environment Certainly a good working environment is crucial for productivity and well-being a 5s led assessor you have to see all these points are maintained or not here are some examples of elements that contribute to a positive working environment noise free training hall utilizing soundproofing materials to minimize external noise implementing quiet hours or designated quiet zones providing noise canceling headphones for focused work 24 into 7 training hall offering flexible working hours to accommodate different schedules providing access to resources and facilities at any time for employees with varying work hours dust free and bright working condition regular cleaning schedules to maintain a dust free environment well designed lighting to ensure proper visibility and reduce eye strain adequate ventilation to improve air quality green garden incorporating indoor plants for improved air quality and aesthetics designing outdoor green spaces for employees to relax and unwind organizing team building activities in the garden for a refreshing break ergonomic furniture and equipment providing comfortable chairs and desks that support good posture offering adjustable computer monitors and keyboards to prevent strain creating ergonomic workstations to enhance overall physical well-being a combination of these elements can contribute to a positive working environment fostering productivity employee satisfaction and overall well-being next identifying location sign board strategy elimination of searching waste the sign board strategy for the elimination of searching waste involves using clear and well designed sign boards to help people easily find the objects or material this strategy is particularly useful in large facilities industry or areas where finding specific material can be challenging A 5s led assessor you have to see all these steps are maintained or not here's how to implement the sign board strategy effectively clear and visible signage consistent design and branding maintain a consistent design and branding for all sign boards throughout the location information hierarchy arrange information on sign boards in a hierarchical manner digital signage color coding multilingual signage interactive signage regular maintenance by employing these strategies you can significantly reduce searching waste by providing clear and efficient method next into s follow fifo which stands for first in first out is a method of inventory management that ensures the oldest stock is used or sold first this approach helps in reducing the risk of product obsolescence spoilage and ensures that the cost of goods sold cogs accurately reflects the cost of the oldest inventory a 5s led assessor you have to see all these important steps are maintained or not 
Here are steps on how to maintain FIFO with examples. Steps to maintain FIFO. Organize inventory. Arrange the inventory in a way that older stock is easily accessible and used first. This could involve physically placing newer stock behind older stock on shelves or using storage systems that facilitate easy identification. Label products with dates. Clearly label each product with its production or purchase date. This information is crucial for identifying the oldest stock. Regular audits. Conduct regular audits of your inventory to ensure that it aligns with your records. This helps in identifying any discrepancies and ensures that the FIFO system is being followed. Training staff. Train staff on the importance of FIFO and how to identify and use older stock first. Make sure they understand the significance of reducing waste and maintaining accurate cost accounting. Inventory Management System Implement an inventory management system that supports FIFO. Many modern systems automatically track inventory based on purchase or production dates and facilitate the easy retrieval of older items. By consistently following these steps and utilizing technology, maintaining FIFO becomes more accurate and less prone to human error. This method is especially important in industries where products have limited shelf life or where product specifications change over time. Next, all electrical appliances should be identified with serial number for easy accessible, such as telephone numbers displayed. Next, as you know into S place for everything and everything in its place. Few examples are marking of aisles, painting of floor in the shop. Marking aisles and painting the floor in a shop are important tasks that contribute to the overall organization, safety and aesthetics of the space. Here are some general guidelines for marking aisles and painting floors in a shop. For marking aisles, plan aisle layout. Consider the layout of your shop and plan the aisle placement strategically for efficient traffic flow. Ensure that aisles are wide enough to accommodate foot traffic and any equipment or carts that may be used in the shop. Use appropriate markings. Choose high contrast colors for aisle markings to ensure visibility. Use durable and long-lasting paint or floor marking tape suitable for the type of flooring in your shop. Straight lines and consistent width. Use straight lines for aisle markings to maintain a neat and organized appearance. Ensure consistent aisle width throughout the shop for a uniform look. Include safety markings. Mark emergency exits, fire extinguisher locations, and other safety-related information in addition to aisle markings. Regular maintenance. Regularly inspect and touch up aisle markings to keep them clear and visible. As a lid assessor you have to see the evidence of all, whether sustainable action implemented or not. Then for painting the floor, choose the right paint. Select a high quality floor paint that is suitable for the type of flooring in your shop, such as concrete, epoxy, etc. Consider using non-slip or anti-slip additives if the floor may become wet. Plan the painting process. Plan the painting process to minimize disruption to normal business operations. If possible, Schedule the painting during off hours to allow sufficient drying time. Use proper techniques. Use the appropriate tools, such as rollers or brushes, 
for the type of flooring and the size of the area you are painting. Apply paint evenly, following the manufacturer's guidelines. As a lid assessor you have to see the evidence of painting color should be documented or not and according it is followed or not. Next, RYBG principle focus on inventory management. Which means, red, yellow, green, blue principle. These four color can be used for visual level marking of stock or inventory. This color-coded system can be a visual aid to quickly assess the status of inventory. Let's break down the meanings you've assigned to each color. Red critical level. Red signifies a critical inventory level, indicating that the stock is dangerously low. This might prompt immediate action, such as expediting the reorder process to prevent stock outs and potential disruptions to operations. Yellow Reorder Point Yellow serves as the signal that the inventory level has reached a threshold where it's time to consider reordering. This point is known as the reorder point and reaching it triggers the replenishment process to ensure that there's no disruption in the supply chain. Green as per requirement stock available. This suggests that the inventory level for the item is sufficient to meet current demand. Green typically signifies a healthy and balanced inventory level aligning with the requirements of the business. Blue Excess Inventory This indicates that there is an excess amount of a particular item in stock. Managing excess inventory is important to avoid unnecessary holding costs, spoilage, or obsolescence. Businesses often try to optimize their inventory levels to prevent overstock situations. Implementing a color-coded system like this can be a visual and intuitive way for inventory managers and staff to quickly identify the status of various items. It helps streamline decision-making and facilitates proactive inventory management. Here's how inventory can be managed by following steps. Identify and categorize inventory. Begin by thoroughly reviewing the existing inventory. Identify all items and categorize them based on their usage, demand, and importance. Classify items. Classify items into categories such as critical, frequently used, occasional use, or obsolete. This classification helps prioritize and manage inventory effectively. Remove unnecessary items. Remove obsolete, expired, or redundant items from the inventory. This reduces clutter and ensures that only necessary items are stored. Designate storage locations. Assign specific, clearly marked storage locations for each category of items. This helps streamline the process of finding and retrieving items when needed. Use standardized containers and labels. Standardize containers and labels for different types of inventory. This consistency makes it easier for employees to identify and return items to their designated places. Implement FIFO first in first out. Arrange items based on the FIFO principle where older stock is used before newer stock. This helps prevent issues like product expiration and ensures that items are used in the order they are received. Visual Management Use visual cues such as color-coded labels, signage, or floor markings to quickly convey information about the location and status of inventory. Integrating all these principles can lead to a more comprehensive and sustainable approach to inventory and overall workplace management. As a lead assessor you have to check the inventory management system. You have to check the documents to see the sustenance pattern. Next, let's see how a proper inventory management by proper 2S implementation. 
Inventory control for spares by using RYGB principle. Next, Inventory control in stores by using RYGB principle. Next, FIFO maintained in store or not by using RYGB principle. Next, Shadow boards for gauges to keep all tools in their proper places. Next, Outlining strategy in drawer. Next, Shadow boards for tools or gauges. Next, Cardboard top file replaced by standard files. Standard catalog holder. Next, see an example of 2S before after photos. Next, this is how a visible inventory control is implemented in different industry. We can easily and clearly count the no of items. Excess or shortage can be identified. Inventory reduction has achieved. Visible inventory control is a management approach that emphasizes the importance of making the inventory status, movements, and processes easily observable and transparent. The goal is to enhance decision-making, efficiency, and accountability in managing inventory. Here are some key aspects of visible inventory control. Real-time tracking can be possible. Barcode or RFID, radio frequency identification, technology can be used to track and manage inventory. Proper visual displays should be provided. Proper color coding and labels should be used. Kanban systems should be followed. Regular audits and cycle counts should be maintained. Then enable mobile access to inventory data for on-the-go monitoring. This allows managers and relevant personnel to check inventory status from various locations within the facility. Then implement automated alerts and notifications for critical events such as low stock levels, order delays, or other issues. This proactive approach enables timely intervention and decision making. Employee Training Train employees on the importance of maintaining accurate and visible inventory records. Ensure that staff members understand the systems in place and their role in keeping the inventory data up to date. Visible inventory control promotes transparency, accountability, and agility in responding to changes in demand or supply chain disruptions. By making inventory information easily accessible, Next, as a lead assessor you have to take some evidence of good, bad, ugly evidence for improvements in presence of that area owner. For this you have to check FPP and WPP principle implementation in the system for 5S sustenance. FPP or fixed point photograph, before implementing 1S, it is necessary to take a few photos of the place from a fixed place with fixed height, fixed angle, and fixed zoom, and it is taken every time we make any improvement of the place. For each FPP, the date and time of the photo is very important. FPP is giving a visual description of the improvement in the area from time to time. WPP or worst point photographs. We select a worst area in terms of 5S and convert it into a best place in that area by doing multiple improvement implementing 1S, 2S and 3S. This gives a motivation for others to implement 5S. There should be number of WPP with before and after photos. Both are displayed in the section or the zone with before and after photograph. One of the main effort is to prevent reoccurrence and taking action on the source. Ensure people should take action or work on FPP on WPP. Next, this is how a good 1S and 2S maintained area looks like. Next, 
11 are key areas to check during a 1S audit. In the context of the 5S methodology, the sort stage, also known as SERI, involves the process of sorting through items in the workplace, identifying necessary items, and removing unnecessary ones. As an auditor in the 1S stage, your focus is on assessing the organization's adherence to the principles of sorting and decluttering. Here are key areas to check during a 1S audit. Identification of necessary items. Verify that employees have identified and separated necessary items from unnecessary ones. Necessary items are those required for current operations and productivity. Red Tagging System Check if the organization is using a red tagging system. Red tags are often used to mark items that are potentially unnecessary or are candidates for removal. Ensure that red tagged items are documented and a process for review is in place. Documentation Review documentation related to the sorting process. This may include lists of necessary items, records of red tagged items, and any criteria used for sorting decisions. Employee Involvement Assess the level of employee involvement in the sorting process. Employees at various levels should be engaged in identifying necessary items and contributing to the decision-making process. Clear Criteria for Sorting Verify that clear criteria exist for determining what constitutes a necessary item. Criteria may include frequency of use, relevance to current processes, and impact on productivity. Disposal Procedures Ensure that there are established procedures for the proper disposal of unnecessary items. This might include recycling, donation, or other environmentally friendly methods. Organization of work areas Check that work areas are organized with only necessary items present. Unnecessary items should be removed or stored in designated areas. Visual management Assess the use of visual cues to indicate the status of items. This might include labeling, color coding, or signage to clearly communicate the sorting decisions. Training and Communication Verify that employees have been trained on the sorting process and are aware of the importance of decluttering for efficiency and safety. Effective communication is key to successful implementation. Waste Reduction Ensure that the organization is actively working towards reducing waste, both in terms of physical items and wasted time due to inefficiencies caused by unnecessary items. Regular Audits Check if there is a plan for regular audits to ensure sustained adherence to the sorting principles. Regular reviews help maintain the benefits of the 1S stage over time. By conducting a thorough audit of the 1S stage, you contribute to the establishment of a well-organized and efficient workplace, setting the foundation for the subsequent stages of the 5S methodology. Next 12 key areas of focusing in case of 2S audit stage. The set in order stage of the 5S methodology focuses on organizing the workplace to enhance efficiency and productivity. As an auditor in the 2S stage, you'll be assessing the organization's adherence to principles related to the systematic arrangement of items and equipment. Here are key areas to check as an assessor during a 2S audit. Logical Layout Verify that the layout of tools, equipment, and materials is logical and supports a smooth workflow. Items frequently used should be easily accessible, while less frequently used items may be stored farther away. Standardized Storage Check if there are standardized storage locations for tools and materials. 
Each item should have a designated place and it should be clearly marked. Shadow boards and labels. Assess the use of shadow boards or labels to indicate where tools or items belong. This visual aid helps employees quickly identify the correct location for each item. Clear markings. Ensure that pathways, aisles, and work areas are clearly marked. This prevents confusion and helps in maintaining a systematic flow within the workspace. Safety considerations. Verify that safety considerations are integrated into the layer. Emergency exits, fire extinguishers, and first aid stations should be easily visible and accessible. Red tag areas. Check if there are designated red tag areas where unnecessary items are temporarily placed. This encourages employees to identify and remove items that are not needed in the workspace. Visual management. Assess the use of visual cues to indicate the status of items or areas. This might include color-coded labels, floor markings, or signage. Space utilization. Check how space is utilized. Ensure that there is an optimal use of available space and that workstations are efficiently arranged. Accessibility. Verify that items are stored at heights and locations that are easily accessible to employees, taking into account ergonomic considerations. Employee involvement. Assess the involvement of employees in the organization and maintenance of the workspace. Employees should be aware of the standardized locations and contribute to maintaining order. Waste reduction. Check if the organization is actively working towards reducing waste, both in terms of physical waste and wasted time due to inefficient layouts. Documentation Review any documentation related to the standardized layout, storage procedures, and organization policies. The goal of the 2S stage is to create an organized and efficient workspace. As an auditor, You'll want to ensure that the principles of set in order are not only implemented but also consistently followed and sustained over time. Providing constructive feedback and recommendations for improvement is crucial to the success of the 5S methodology. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to download all training material for your reference. Thank you so much for tuning into today's training. I hope you found